Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Um, you're getting very lucky, this is the second colouring chat of the week. i am just got time to make the videos because I still haven't got my car back so I can't go sourcing. So, if you're new to the channel, hello, welcome. I make videos about various hobbies that I like to pursue. Colouring is one of them. So this is a colouring video. I also make videos sometimes about books and reading, um, diamond painting occasionally, and even photography sometimes, although they're very few and far between. And of course there's the vlogs. So today we're going to do colouring in the Witchcraft Colouring Book by Morgana Sky because it is October. And we're going to colour the, uh, yes, the Ouija board. I know, I know people don't like these, but I don't mind. So we're going to have a little colouring chat. Is that like a potato? <laughs> it looks like a potato. So I'm going to do the, the, oh no, that's wrong. I don't want that one yet. I want this one. So I'm going to be using a mixture of Windsor and Newton and Ohuhu markers and possibly a few other blends in there for good measure. So I'm just going to do this background first of the board. This colour is actually called Brick Beige. But I think it looks quite nice. For this I do, I haven't used these markers for absolutely ages. I'm so lucky they still work. <coughs> oh, I can start coughing. How is everybody? Are you okay? Are you doing fine? Are you enjoying October so far? What's the weather like in your part of the world? Here it's a mixture of sunshine and showers, um, some heavy rain at times. We're supposed to have the last, potentially the last good weekend of the year this weekend. I'm looking forward to getting out and taking some photos and having a walk. All that good stuff that will be in the weekly vlog next week. I haven't done a huge amount of colouring this week. I have got a few that I've started this month that I'm working on. I've got a few left over from last month that I need to finish. I've just sort of been chilling this week because um, I'm not having the car. But I'll tell you what I have, have done. I have done so much walking. I am not fit at all. Um, and normally I drive everywhere. But because I'm out of the car, I've been walking down the road, taking Jennifer to school, which I want to keep doing if the weather's dry. I don't mind if it's cold as long as it's dry. If it's absolutely hammering down, I'm not going to make a walk down that, even though I used to. It's further than when, where I used to go to school, though. So. Um, and I've been obviously picking her up and walking back. And yesterday I went for another walk uh, up to an old churchyard. There used to be a church there. The church is now long since gone. It's been demolished um, and its replacement was built down in the main town. And you can see all about that on next week's weekly vlog. Uh, because yeah, we've been up there taking photographs. Um, I am trying to uh, I can't think of the word. I'm testing film cameras. That's what it is. And so I've, I've done a lot of walking. I'm absolutely shattered because I'm just not used to it. So today I'm taking it a little bit easier. Obviously I have walked her down to school today and I will be picking her up this afternoon. So that's enough. Um, if it's raining, we'll come straight home. It doesn't look very nice out. It's a bit grey today. If it's nice, I usually let her go to the park for half an hour. Um, but I am so, so tired. I've had one sale pair of shoes, so I've got to pack those up, but I do the packing after I've had my lunch. And I'm literally just trying to take it easy. I'm looking forward to it's Friday tomorrow, last day of the week. So I mean I don't know, we might go in I might go into town on Saturday. Have a quick look round. It, it depends on what we wanted, what we feel like like doing. I want to have a walk around St Willow's Cemetery, take some photos. Um, I'm making a video about an old camera now that was um, from 1939, so it's a very old camera. So I would like to finish filming that, or well, majority of that, because the only bit I've got to do, I've done the overview of the camera itself and how to load it, use it. I'm just going to take some photos with it, develop the said photos and show them. 
I don't have a GoPro, so I'm going to be reliant on Paul to try and film me on the camera I am using now. You can also go in the charity shop then as well, and I can have a look at the books. I'm allowed to buy books from there because they're like 25 pence each. <laughs> and I usually come back with about 10 or so. We haven't been over for a while. I still wonder why there's a potato in the corner. I'm not actually sure. But it just looks funny that there's a potato in the corner and I'm not sure why. Um. Oh dear, it's been busy. Tomorrow we're hopefully going to go and meet our friends at the local pub. It's the one night we go out, it's a Friday afternoon. Well, it's an afternoon, it's not, it's not night really. Not worrying about going over the letters because I'll be going over them in a darker colour anyway. Um, potentially even black, I'm not sure yet, I haven't decided. Yeah, we go up there, they have fish and chips on and it's not that expensive so sometimes it's a pie and a pint as well or pie, pie and chips. I like the fish. Depends what's on. Sometimes a curry. Um, we go up there, have a few, few drinks, something to eat. Jennifer has some chips as well and then she has something when she gets home. And we, we just enjoy what you know getting out because I don't I don't go out I don't I don't go out with, with people <laughs> I don't do people that nah, I, I like people in small doses so I don't like too big a crowds but somewhere like the Prince is fine it's supposed to be quite a nice thing even if it's raining they've got a covered beer garden so it's really nice sit in there have your food Jennifer's friend will probably be up and uh, a couple of pints let me just go home. It's really nice. They'll be having fireworks night up there on um, November the 5th. So uh, fireworks night is a bonfire night. It's November the 5th and it's to do with when they tried to blow up Parliament. Guy Fawkes and his uh, cronies tried to blow up Parliament. And it's remembered, it's celebrated in a way because he didn't do it. So the way things are today, you, you kind of think you wish he had. But yeah, so it's all about that. It's okay, you know, used to back in the day have a big bonfire. We have the fireworks, which is um, symbolizing the explosions, I guess. And you'd have a big bonfire and you'd have a guy on the top and it's called a guy because his name was Guy. It was Guy Fawkes. So you'd, you would make a guy out of old clothes and rags and things that would burn easily. You give him a face and a mask and you would just burn it and people the kids would go around with the guy back in the old days I can remember doing it I can remember them coming around as well and you go penny for the guy and yes it's begging but so is Halloween but that's okay you go around begging for sweets the only difference is you're begging for pennies and it was literally a penny for the guy is, but it, I don't see any difference between Penny for the Guy as I do Halloween. It's all begging. But some people didn't didn't like that. I, you don't see Penny for the Guy that much these days. It's something has gone out of fashion. I'm not a big fireworks fan. I will be honest. Um, and a recent incident in Wales has convinced me I'm right. In the fact that um, there was these two young lads out with their one of their dads and somebody flew a firework they didn't know what it was because it hadn't exploded at that point they picked it up and it exploded in their face kid nearly lost an eye um and my opinion is that fireworks should be banned from public sale and only organized displays should be able to buy them i'm sorry if you don't agree with that but that is my feeling too many people have been hurt killed maimed had their lives ruined lost their eyesight because of those damn fireworks. Um, I love watching them and I like watching them with Jennifer, but we don't get them ourselves. We've been cheap the last few years because originally she wasn't interested in them. Last year was the first year she took an interest. And what we did is literally we went out into the garden when we heard them going off and I lifted her up onto my shoulder so she could see and we watched them from the garden. <laughs> this year, it's on a Sunday, Prince of Wales are having a display they have got a separate garden where they can do it though. So the Prince of Wales is very good because it's got this, these two gardens. They're on the canal. 
So they've got the, the covered beer garden where all the benches are and then they've got a green sort of hilly space that goes down. Um, because they're on a public footpath towards the canal, it's a really weird property. You, the public footpath goes right in front of the pub, but then they've got in front of them a little field. It's not a field, it, it, it's a big garden. And I would imagine that's where they set the fireworks off for because there's a wall, wall there where you can watch it from. I've, I've not been, but I'm imagining that's what's going to happen. So my idea is that we'll find out what time it is from the owner, Jason. Um, go up early, maybe even book Sunday lunch if they're doing Sunday lunch that day. I might ask if they're doing it and if they are, have Sunday lunch and just stay up there all afternoon. It's usually not until about eight, eight o'clock and lunch is like one, but be absolutely wrecked by the time it comes around. I think it'd be nice. And nice for Jennifer to see. They also have a Christmas party and um, she went to that last year. That was good. And then she came down with chicken pox the next day, which was not good. <laughs> oh, I can't believe that was a year ago. So I've got some money out of the bank today to pay uh, my mechanic, Carl, because I'll be getting my car back tomorrow. Yay! We'll need to put some diesel in it, though. Do that on Sunday, or depending on what's in there. Oops, when I get it back. I'll either get the diesel Saturday or Sunday. But yeah, I'm looking forward to getting out and having my... I'm, I'm looking forward to having my car back So I haven't seen my mum and dad all week. I could walk down there, but I'm with, what with walking to school and back, it's a lot of walking. It's like, for me, and I'm not used to it, I walked four miles yesterday. Well, over four miles yesterday. And that's a lot. And I'm glad I did it because it's good for my health. But I am not used to it. <laughs> Oh dear. I am not used to walking, I've got to be honest, but it'll get better the more I do it. So yeah, but that's it really. So what else have I been up to? Um I've been really watching much, been watching your colouring videos. Um not so much the hauls because I am not buying at the moment, although I do use um an app called Mist Play. I've got a few apps. I've got Mist Play, which obviously you play games on your phone and it, it counts how long you play for and it gives you tokens or coins, whatever you want to call them. And then you save it up and you get so much money for it. Now it takes ages. I'm not going to lie. It takes ages because the longer you play and the more of the levels that you reach within Mist Play for that particular game, and there's only 20, the longer it takes to play that that you get longer to play the game so if you're playing something like for instance oh i don't know lucky buddies which i have actually finished or spin a spell or monopoly go which i love you can only play it unless you're buying things and it's pointless to buy anything if you're trying to get money from it because it's it's just a waste of time so what I, I, I do is I play it and now of course things like spin a spell because I'm on level 13, Monopoly Go I'm on 18. Now Monopoly Go is quite good, it does give you a lot of stuff Monopoly Go. Spin a spell does, I haven't finished playing it, did I really play it? I, mean, I might have, I don't know. And the idea is of course that you, you keep playing different games and newer games. Now the games that give the most rewards are games I'm not that keen on, so they're the fighting games. Um, I can't think of any of them, there's one of the quite famous ones. Um, I like more like the the games like uh, Dice Dreams, which isn't on there, but Domino Dreams is, and I do have that on there. And there's a couple of bingo games on there. In fact, I've got three bingo games at the moment. Now, they don't give as many points, but I'd rather play something I actually enjoy playing. I'm not going to play a game I'm, I'm not interested in. I did, uh, they would, uh, every now and again they give you bonuses like um, play 20 minutes of a new game and we'll give you 50 points. So you get your normal levelling up points. For instance, I was playing a game today and I played it for ages. And uh, so I got 50 points from that. And then I levelled up to level, I think I'm on level 8 now. And you get bonuses for playing for 20 minutes. You get bonus for reaching level 5. You get a bonus for reaching level 15. Obviously I'm not there yet, but it won't be long the way I'm playing it. Um, and then you get a bonus for playing one hour after 11pm. And it seems to do it on British time as well, which is really cool. Um, but I, I don't know. Uh, so I haven't done too much of that yet. 
but I enjoy that sort of game. It's one of those match games where you have to pick three and something like that. I still don't know why there's a potato there. It's a bit weird. <laughs> I just thought it'd be a bit nice to do an extra colouring chat. I don't know if you've been watching my completed colouring books. There's only one of them. Well, not my completed colouring books. My collection of uncoloured colouring books. But thanks to this colouring chat, that's another one off of that list. I, I, I don't even think that one's gone up yet. But, um, no, it would have because it's in the hand. It might have, might have, I don't know. Anyway, if you see it on there, it's because I hadn't coloured in this book when I filmed that video. Um, it's in three parts because there are that many. I am hoping we'll get some of them down this month because these are obviously all the uh, Halloween ones. But we will see. There's a lot of books, which is another reason why I'm glad I'm not really buying that many. But like I said, I have got up to the £50 giveaway on Miss Play. Um, the next one is 100, which is a long way off. So you get five or 10 is the first one, then 25, then 50, then 100. Now, it's so many points on 100 that I'm probably going to, well, I know I'm going to get claim my 25 first because there's a book I want out this month. And while I've got it, I don't want it to go to buying uh, stuff for uh, any other stuff. This is money for me to play with so I can buy my extra bits. So the money from eBay is literally for living and stuff. But uh, then I also have something called Windwalk. And again, this pays out very little, less than... Uh, the other one and I've had it over on my app for over a year on my phone and I forget to collect, collect it sometimes but what you do is it counts how many steps you walk and then once uh, you, you go in and you claim them you have to watch an ad to claim them and they add up and then eventually it'll give you a tenner and I mean eventually it's literally like 20,000 points uh, and you've got to do a hundred steps to get one point. Now, obviously I'm working a lot, walking a lot more. Um, so it, it, it doesn't bother me that it's taken a long time. It, it, it takes as long as it takes. It's that simple, you know? But with it, I do, it, it's not something that takes up a lot of space. It just runs in the background. So I just leave it, leave it run and, and wait to see what happens. Eventually it'll give me a tenner and, you know, for Amazon, an Amazon voucher, and that will be something I can use to buy a colouring book if I want to, or um, a novel, or put towards something else. So, yeah. I mean, I don't need colouring books. Do I want any more? Yes, absolutely. People keep releasing books I want. They're very naughty. Do I need any? No. <laughs> but I do love my colouring, as you know. I think colouring and reading are my two main hobbies. Photography was, but it kind of went out the window when Jennifer was born because it's very hard to push a pram and, and hold a camera. And even when there's two of you and she's toddling, she wants mummy most of the time. Now, of course, she's a lot older and she's quite happy to just run around on her own. As long as I can see her. I don't know, you know, you know what I mean. So she's very good. And uh, she's been ever so good lately, so I'm proud of her. She had a nightmare last night, came in and slept with me. But, you know, sometimes that's going to happen. I had strange dreams because I've read, i got to be honest, um, I found a book on Amazon, Unlimited, Kindle Unlimited, because it was advertised on Facebook. And it, I, and it, it does recommend books, when you, re you know, because obviously I've got Goodreads, which posts to Facebook. 
and of course it's Goodreads is linked to Amazon because it's an Amazon company. So of course every time I post something it, it, it recommends books to you via the algorithm and I'm fine with that because I like books. Anyway this book was a time travel book called Yester Time by a guy named Andrew Cunningham it's set in Arizona originally and it's about this guy who visits a, a ghost town and it starts to rain the ghost town's pretty much gone so he shelters in some caves because they're nearer than the car in the cave he finds a trunk in the trunk he finds some old um, western style clothes including a Stetson hat then he finds a note and the note says, I'm going to die in 1870, a hundred years before I was born. So of course he's perplexed by that. So he goes to the rest of it and he finds a, new, a, a, a pad and, or some newspaper or a piece, something from which this piece was torn and there's a bit more into it. And so at first he thinks that's some sort of joke, but there's some original coins and stuff in there and things that could be worth some money so he's quite excited and he wants to have a look at it and then he starts thinking this is a joke because right at the bottom in a bag he finds a digital camera and two memory cards so he's thinking well okay this is weird so he looks at the batteries the batteries are, uh, are dead and they've leaked because they have been there for a while and he so he takes it all home keeps it safe and hides it from people He knows the name the name of the guy, it was on the bit, one of the bits of paper, his name was Stan Hooper, so he Googles him and found that there was a Stan Hooper that went missing in 2011. He puts the memory card into his computer and sees images of a ghost town, of the ghost town, but full of people. Think He's thinking, this is a bit weird, and then he starts recognising people. So he recognises um, Stan Hooper once he googles him and finds photographs of him and he concludes that it was the man that went missing in 2011 and then he sees a picture of two women uh whole you know with their arms around each other saying you know posing for photographs they and this is on a digital camera but he recognizes the two women one's young and one's a bit older so the younger woman was an, is an, a movie actress named natalie o'brien who disappeared in 2009 and the other older woman is a writer named Beryl something. I can't think of her surname now. And she went missing in 1933. She was a, a mystery writer along the lines of Agatha Christie. And he's still convinced that this, this is a Photoshop and it's all been made up. And then he finds a photograph of a dead man. And the dead man, it, it, you can see that it's not Photoshop, it's not makeup, it is definitely a real thing. But he's still convinced he's some sort of hoax. You know, somebody trying to um, play a trick to say that time travel's real. Until he comes across a photograph in the saloon where he spots somebody he knows very well indeed. And it's his great, great grandfather. And I won't tell you any more of the plot because watching him work it out and, and figure it out and what he does is so good. There's literally three in the series so far. And I literally read the first two back to back last night. And then I had dreams about time travel. It's not surprising, is it? Are you surprised I had dreams about time travel after that lot? No, I'm not. <laughs> oh, it's ridiculous. Yeah, I had lots of dreams about time travel. It was good though, it was weird, but it was a good dream. <laughs> they were good dreams. And those books are really good. So I'm gonna have a look about getting book three and try and read that. And then <sighs> it's actually helping my Goodreads challenge because I'm so far behind <laughs> that reading two books a day. It says I've got to read one and a half books a day to complete the challenge. Well, yesterday I read two. <laughs> I only need to read one today. I have got uh, two other books on the go. I'm reading a book called Songs of Willow Frost, which is about a young orphan, a Chinese American boy in the depression, I wanna say. Yes, it is, it's the depression. So it, the, the talkies are in and he was told his mother had died 
and he goes to the cinema with all the children on the boys' birthdays. So the boys in the orphanage celebrate their birthday on the same day and then the girls have their birthday later in the year or earlier in the year, again, on the same day. So it makes it easier for the staff to cope. And when he's there, he sees um, a, a short which has this woman singing in it and he's convinced the woman's his mother because she looks like her, his mother, she sounds like his mother and her name is Willow Frost. So the story is about him trying to locate her and to find out if he, if she is his mother. Um, but there's a lot more to it than that, apparently, her life. And I um, haven't got far into it yet, but I am enjoying it. It's a really well written, very interesting book. And I'm also reading The Hollywood Book of Death for my Hollywood Book of the Month. Now this is, it is an odd book because it's got some of the really big stars in there. So obviously it's got Marilyn, it's got Judy Garland, I think was in it. It's got Elvis in it, it's got James Dean in it, it's got Jane Mansfield in it. It's got some obscure ones. It hasn't got Jean Harlow in it, which I thought was odd. Because she is still very recognisable. Mainly because Marilyn was obsessed with her, but she's still got a lot of stalwart fans of her own. Um, so I'm surprised there wasn't a chapter on her or Paul Byrne, for that matter. But it's still very interesting to learn about some of the people I don't know. And there are moderner people in there. Moderner, that's <laughs> not a word. Um, like John Belushi, Chris Farley, etc, etc. That I'm not particularly interested in because to me Hollywood ended in about 1965, apart from the 80s. But saying that, they have got things that people like Dominique Dunn and that in there, so that's interesting. So I think it just depends on whether it's somebody I like. I mean... John Belushi was alright. Um, just that Hollywood's never learned. And Paul River Phoenix, he's in it. So I try to read one of those a night, if I can. But it is a very good, it's a very interesting book. I must admit, very, very interesting. Now, I've only coloured this little bit in, and it's nearly been half an hour. So I'm going to stop soon because it must be on for lunchtime and I'm hungry. So I'm just going to finish this bit of writing, I think, and maybe do the numbers and goodbye. <laughs> it doesn't have hello on it. But that's okay. And then find something. I don't know what to have for lunch. I haven't got a clue today. Uh, I'll have a look and decide. So obviously I've got to go pack my item after I've had food. Which will be fun. Actually it should be alright. I'm liking this picture. I'm going to enjoy this. We will have a part two to do the bits around the edges. It's taking a long time just to do this little bit, hasn't it, really? I don't know how many pages I'm going to do this month. It depends on how much I feel like colouring. Because sometimes, you know, sometimes you really want to colour tons and then other times you just don't. I like to colour in the evenings, but obviously I've been so tired. And last night I was reading the book. I must go and get the, the next one. I must. Uh, as long as it's on Unlimited. If I have to pay for it, I'll wait for it to come on Unlimited. <laughs> I'm not paying for anything at the moment. If I was going to pay a couple of quid for a book, I'd, I want to I'll go to the charity shop and buy ten. Or buy, you know, four for a pound, which is pretty much what they charge. The paperbacks. Hardback's a bit more expensive, but that's okay. Hardback's are only 50p, by the way. They're not that much more expensive. I do feel really tired. Oops, that's not good. Never mind. 
I, 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 I did a roll of film. I, it's 30 minutes, it cuts off automatically. I developed a roll of film today and it took me so long to be able to get it on the thing. I was so tired. I, I, first of all, I put everything in it and I realised I'd forgotten the spiral. So I had to go and get the spiral to put the film on. Then I found I'd put it in the changing bag in the outer compartment instead of the inner one. There's two compartments to keep making sure it's light tight. Then I couldn't get the film out of the canister. Then I couldn't get it on the spiral. So I went and got a different spiral and used a different spiral. <laughs> then it wasn't too bad and then it got stuck at the end, but eventually I got it off. Once I got it off, it wasn't too bad. But then when I was trying to figure out how much liquids it is, like it's like one part developer to so much water, I got confused over that. And I was like, this isn't right. What am I doing wrong? And then I realised what it was. And it's just because I'm absolutely shattered. Oh, naughty me. Why am I, you know... Doing that, you know, I thought I shouldn't have done this. I should have left it so I was more awake. But it's done now. It's hanging up in the bathroom drying, which is good news, where it should be. So I've had a fairly easy work week with um, because normally I'll go out Monday or Tuesday and round the shops having a look for stuff to buy to sell on. Yes, I'm a reseller. I don't care what you think. I know some people don't like them. I prefer to sell cameras, to be honest. Um, but of course, I don't have my car, so I can't do that. I've also... Um, I'm testing some quite expensive cameras at the moment. The one I'm testing is worth about 200 quid. So, obviously, I spent part of yesterday doing that. I'll probably take that one at the canal when we go up on to the prints, just to finish the film off. And I've got another one, a compact camera with one in as well, which is it's okay. It's just annoying because I've got to. <sighs> They've got pretty much the same pictures on them, which is partly why I want to go to the cemetery. Because if I don't finish it, I've got about 10 shots of that on it. If I don't finish it up there, I can finish it there. I'd rather finish it there and take a different camera up, up the canal, up the prints, uh, and take a different camera to test. Because I've got a few others. I've missed a few bits there. I'll finish that off in a minute as well. I love Jennifer. She loves watching, like, she's so funny. She loves watching videos on YouTube, right? And she pretends she's making a video. She goes, I'm making a video. I'm like, okay. And she she plays along with the videos on the screen. It's just make-believe. It's just a different form of make-believe than what we used to do. Unless she has hold of my phone and then she fills it with rubbish because she gets into the camera part of it and she fills the memory with the rubbish. I literally had to go through and delete a ton of stuff yesterday because I I had a warning on how much gig memory I had left. I still had eight gig, mind. Because <laughs> she'll just put on games indiscriminately that she wants to try and play. And then she'll um, do the... takes loads of photographs. And they're like... There was like five photographs of her feet. <laughs> picture of her shoes I mean okay at least she's practicing taking photos and I can delete them it's not a problem it was just so funny anyway I managed to I, eventually I went into the bin and deleted them all from the bin as well I managed to clear about seven gigs worth of stuff probably about 10 gig in all after everything else I deleted as well anyway so let's have a look uh, we've done most of the Ouija board we've only got the rest of the planchette to do we've got the background um these bits, the flowers and the potato. I'm not sure. Uh, the potato is still beyond me, but there you go. I'm not sure where's the potato there. I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you know where the potato is there, please let me know in the comments below. And I'll see you in the next video when we will continue with this picture. I love you guys and I'll see you soon. Bye.